So 6.5 part two. So we worked yesterday with just the parent functions of all of these graphs of the square root function, which was uh, y equals the square root of x, right? And we worked with y equals the cube root of x, where this said x is greater than or equal to zero as my parameter, yes? Now we're working where we have this h and k and the a in it. The a is easy because we actually did that yesterday. What number would be the a that we had yesterday? What would be an example of something that could be my a? What does my a do? Yeah, Drew, you're right. It's, nine, seven, it's like this. Yeah, so it stretches, it shrinks it, or it flips it. Okay? So the a does that. We're used to working with a. The h and k, here's the deal. The h and the k on both of these are going to act like the same thing. Do you know how yesterday we started at 0, zero like zero, 0 was always my turning point on a cube root, right? And 0, 0 was always my um, starting point on this square root function, yes? The h and the k change your turning point and your starting point. It tells you where you're turning or where you're starting from. Your h and your k on your square root function tells you your domain and range. Okay. So h and k equals starting point or turning point. h and k on um, square root equal domain and range. Now, do you see how the H inside is negative and the K is positive on the outside? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the K stays whatever it is. The H, however, is opposite of what it is. Okay, and we're going to talk about that in a second. So we're going to graph this. I'll give you one minute. And then we're going to graph two of them, and then we're just going to graph in homework tonight and practice. Mm -hmm. Don't you want this? Okay, so if I want to graph this um, function right here, y equals negative 2, the square root of x minus 3 plus 2, where is my starting point? Your starting point would be going to be. Uh, yes, it's 3, 2. My starting point is 3, 2. It's opposite of this, and this stays yeah. the same. So 3, 2 is a point I'm going to graph. Okay? Um, 3, 2. That means my graph shifted from the original origin to the right 3 and up 2. Okay? Now from there, I'm going to plug numbers in. Okay? Um, now look at this graph. Is it going to face up or down? Uh, down. Down, because of what? The negative. And the negative. And what does the 2 also tell me it's doing? It's going to stretch by 2. It's going to stretch by 2 units. Okay? So I'm going to plug in numbers on this side of 3, because I know it's not going to come anywhere over here. The graph can't come that way, because oh. this is the starting point. So I have to plug in numbers 4, 5, 6. And because it's uh, square root. So it's square root of... Yeah, yes and no, Drew. If my starting point was over here, I could still plug in these negative numbers because what it's what would happen is whatever you did inside of here wouldn't actually come out negative. Okay? okay? Like if this said positive 6, I can plug in a negative 5 and still have a positive number in there, yes? Oh, yeah, because... Okay? So now that we're shifting it, it goes off of where this dot is shifting. So I always graph that dot first, and then I say, okay, I need numbers that are on this side of that dot to plug in. So I'm going to plug in a 4, a 5, and a 6, okay? Actually, I'm going to plug in just a 4 and a 6. So if I plug in a 4, x, y, plug in 4, and then I'm going to plug in a 6. If I plug in a 4, I get 4 minus 3, which is? 1. Square root of 1 is? 1. 1 times negative 2 is? Negative 2. And then negative 2 plus 2 is? 0. Boom. So 4, 0. Um, 3, 
Now I plug in six. Six minus three. Um, wait, let me, yeah. Six minus three is three. Let's plug in. I lied. Let's plug in a seven because it will make it easier. Seven minus three is four. Square root of four. Two. Two times negative two. Negative four. And negative four plus two. Negative two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, negative two, and I have my graph. So you what you so when you graph, you want to make another for like circle squares? If possible. Okay. Okay. If not, you're just gonna get a decimal answer. Not a big deal. You can still graph those. Now, notice how I don't have an arrow here. Why do I not have an arrow there? Because it's your starting point. point. It's your starting point. But I have an arrow here because that, that graph's gonna continue. Now, tell me my domain. Look at your starting point. Look at your x and your starting point. X is what? Uh, or x is greater than or equal to zero. No. Three. three. Where's my three starting point, point three starting point. My starting point. X is greater than or equal to three. My starting point. Okay. So my range comes from the y of my starting point. What's my range? Less than or equal to two. Good. Y is less than or equal to 2 because the Y is dropping. Good, Drew. And if it's going up. It would be if it's going up, then it would say greater than or equal to 2. Nice. Okay? Awesome. Good job. So that is that portion. Okay? Not super hard. You find your starting point and you graph from there. Okay. Now, once again, graphing Y equals the cube root R equals 3, the cube root of X plus 4 minus 1. Yes? Okay? We need to figure out what my starting point is first. Uh, what my new starting point is, okay? What are my new, not my starting point on this. On cube root functions, I have a turning point, right? So where is my turning point on this cube root function? Uh, negative four, negative one. Yes, negative four, negative one. So if I graph negative four, negative one, that means that I need like two or three numbers on this side of that and two or three numbers on this side of that. Okay, so I'm going to plug in some numbers. I'm going to plug in uh, negative 2, 0, and positive 2 on that side. And on this side, I'm going to plug in, what am I at, 4 right now, negative 4? I'm going to plug in negative 6 and negative 8, okay? Just to give a rough estimate of what it looks like, x, y. If I plug in a negative 8, negative 8 plus 4 is? Negative What's this cube root of negative 4? That's a good question. It's not negative 2. Cube root, not square root. Oh. Cube root of negative 4 comes out to a decimal. What is it? Uh, negative 1.59. Just take whatever that is in your calculator, multiply it by what? What am I multiplying that when I get this answer? What am I multiplying three. it by? Three. Multiply it by three. And then what do I do to that answer after that? Subtract. Subtract one. So you should get negative 5.8 when we round? Yes. Okay. Negative 5.8. Now we're going to do the same thing with negative six. Negative six plus four is? Negative. Take the cube root of negative 2. Multiply it by 3. Subtract 1. And you should get negative 4.8. Plug in negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is? 2. Take the cube root of uh, 2. Multiply it by 3. And subtract 1 from it, and you get 2.8. Plug 0 in. So then I'm taking the cube root of 4. Multiply it by 3. Subtract 1 from it, and you get 3.8. Take 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. Cube root of 6. Multiply by 3. Subtract 1 from it, 4.5. Okay, so now I plot these points. 
2, 4.5, negative 2, 2.8, negative 2, 2.8, negative 6, negative 4.8, 2, 4, and negative 8, negative 5.8, 2, 4, 5, 8. So, so my graph looks something like this. Do you see? Now, domain and range. Would it be all in range? It would be. Beautiful. Okay. That is what we are doing today.